Well, also making headlines, the massive migrant caravan marching towards the U.S. southern border. According to some reports, the group of about 8,000 people, mostly from Central America, Venezuela, and Cuba, the number of migrants is only expected to increase. Newsmax border correspondent Jason Jones is live from Austin, Texas with the latest. Jason, set the scene for us. What's going on down there? Well, Todd, it's good to be with you. And here we go again. Another caravan this year, and this one a large one. Estimated numbers right now at 8,000, expected to get up to possibly 15,000. Now, they are in the southern part of Mexico right now, trying to make their way through the southern state of Chiapas into Mexico City. And then from there, they'll take the underground Uber is what it's known as, as they work with alien smuggling organizations to make their way north to the Mexican border, northern border. And then from there, also getting on La Bestia, breaking up, being spread out across our border. Here's how it impacts Americans, though. What we've been seeing in Arizona as the Sinaloa cartel has been moving thousands upon thousands of people through Lukeville, also in El Paso, Texas, as Sinaloa and La Lina cartel are moving thousands of people. Eagle Pass. We'll continue to see those streams because as this group that makes their way through Mexico, we're going to continue to feel that here. But here's the other part to this. As you see these caravans, you have to remember one thing here too. Mexico, Central and South America, the pipeline as we call it, they are all backed up. You have thousands upon thousands of people surging to make their way our, uh, up to our border. When I was in Eagle Pass last week, I mean, Todd, we were talking about 10 to 12,000 just coming from Monterey into Eagle Pass to make their way into the country. So, look, I want to be very clear here. There is no end in sight. We are seeing right now record setting numbers. The month of November, 308,000 encounters. In October, 309,000 encounters. And why is that important? Because these are the winter months. This is usually when the numbers are at their lowest, but instead they're at the highest. So, what does that trend tell you? That tells you what's coming throughout the end of the year. So, look. As we go into this new year in 2024, get ready. The numbers are showing clearly what to expect as we start the new year out. Back to you. All, all right, Jason, good reporting there. Appreciate it. You be safe uh, down there in Texas. Jason Jones reporting for Newsmax. Well, joining me now to discuss is Brandon Judd, president of the National Border Patrol Council. Uh, great to have you with us, Brandon. Uh, the migrant caravan continuing to increase in numbers by the day. They're estimating about nearly 8,000, but we're hearing it could be, it could exceed, far exceed those numbers. Uh, curious, where are you right now and what are you hearing, uh, boots on the ground? Uh, I'm just north of Naco, Arizona. And, and what we're seeing every single day, we're seeing a caravan every single day. Um, you know, on Christmas Day, which is normally our slowest day of the year, we apprehended seven times what the norm is. So we're seeing a caravan every single day on our southwest border. And what that does is that depletes our resources. It doesn't allow us to properly patrol the border. We cede area to the cartels every single time we have to take these group, big groups into custody. We have to transport them. We have to process them. We have to take them to the hospital. We have to do detention security when these individuals are in, in our stations. So it, it takes our agents out of the field. And when our agents aren't in the field, we can't properly patrol the border. And when we can't do that, that means American lives are in danger. That's when the gotaways happens. That's when the uh, aliens from special interest countries, countries that want to do us harm. That's when the fentanyl, the cocaine, that's when it makes it into our country. This is a very dangerous situation that could be solved tomorrow if we had the proper policy, but we can't get this administration to do what's right by the American people. You, you've got Chris Ray uh, testifying up on Capitol Hill. I've, I've talked to at least a dozen lawmakers, Brandon. They all say it's not a matter of if, but when you know the terrorists strike, and they're afraid they're coming up across that that border. Are you hearing those same concerns from Border Patrol agents? We all we're all concerned about that, especially with the gotaways. It's one thing to take somebody in custody that matches some semblance of the terrorist watch list. But it's another thing when you know that thousands upon thousands of people are able to enter our country illegally and evade apprehension. You know, one of those one of those individuals that was apprehended on the terrorist watch list was apprehended in the truck of trunk of a vehicle in Texas. It was Texas DPS that was able to apprehend that individual. I can personally tell you that it is most likely that that person was in fact that terrorist. So we 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 have to look at what is depleting our resources. How can we put our resources back in the field? How can we actually protect American people? Because that's what every single border patrol agent want to do wants to do we want to protect the american people we just can't do it right now under the policies that were given by this administration all right so we've got uh, blinken right now and mayorkas they're down in mexico uh, talking about border crisis solutions 
Uh, are they really going to get to anything? Or are we just talking about another photo op here? Yeah, that, that's all it is. This is a fool's errand, and it upsets every single law enforcement officer throughout the nation, especially Border Patrol agents, because we know that the solution is right here on our border. We shouldn't re we shouldn't rely upon Mexico to do our job. We shouldn't rely upon any country to do our job. We need to learn from the past. We need to learn from Afghanistan. We need to, to learn, you know, what happened when, when we tried to partner with Iraqis. We need to learn what, what happens when we try to partner with other countries that have their own agenda. Mexico has its agenda. All of these people that work their way up through their country, they spend a lot of money there. It, it brings a lot of money into the economy. And then you have to look at the cartels. The cartels are generating billions of dollars of profit every single year that goes right back into the Mexican economy. It does not benefit them in any way, shape or form to stop all of this illegal immigration that's coming into the United States. In fact, it benefits them to help the cartels. You see, and this is this is where I just don't get it, Brandon, because you're right. These folks have to uh, invade Mexico. Uh, they're traversing the entire country to get up to the United States. At some point, they should have been stopped here. So I'm wondering why we're not putting pressure on Mexico to deal with the problem before it ends up in our backyard. Yeah, that's why President Trump was so successful. What he did was he threatened tariffs that were greater than the amount of money the cartels were able to bring in for the for the economy. That would have crippled them. That's why Mexico actually became true border security partners. So if Blinken and Mayorkas go down there and they go down there from a position of power, if they threaten tariffs, then you might get Mexico to act. But right now what's happening is Mexico feels that they're in the position of power. They feel like they're coming to this negotiations at a position of strength because they know that President Biden is weak. They know that President Biden isn't going to go against his base of supporters, which wants these open borders. And so if, if any time that you do that, you can't expect Mexico to actually do what's necessary to do the job to support our border security efforts. They're just not going to do it unless we actually have some bargaining chip that we're willing to use to shut them down. Yeah, you mentioned the money part of it. We're looking at the latest House estimates uh, here, Brandon. The annual cost to accommodate the millions of illegal aliens already here. Uh, get this, $451 billion, sir. $451 billion. Now, when you compare that to the total cost of the border wall, we're talking $15 billion. So under Trump, we had some viable solutions, the wall, the Remain in Mexico policy, all revoked by the Democrats. Are we really expected to believe that this crisis was not intentional? This was all planned? It was absolutely intentional. They knew what they were doing from day one. I know this personally because I spoke with the transition team. We gave them the advice that they needed. We told them exactly what they needed to do. They refused to listen. This is all about the base. When you look at, at Biden's polling numbers, we know that he's he's underwater, but there's 38 percent that approve of what he's doing. That's that 38 percent that is the hardcore base that goes out and votes. If he were to secure the border, he would lose those voters, and he, he's not willing to take that chance. He knows that if he loses those voters, he for sure loses the election. So he's constantly pandering to what he thinks is best for his political future. And when that comes to, when you do that, wow. then you're going to act with us to, to open border activists. And that's what he's got in the White House right now. All right, real quick, Brandon, uh, we've been hearing a lot of reports about some pretty significant health issues along the border. Are you hearing that, that information as well? What are we talking about? Yeah, we see we, we constantly see diseases that, that we don't have that we typically don't have here in the United States. And then, of course, when you look at uh, the covid and the dangers uh, of the mutations that, that happen there, we see that on the border as well. We see things that, that just never should be coming into this country on top of the, the diseases. We also see the cartels rape, murder and, and sometimes murder women and children. We see every all of the, the the depredation that exists in the world. We see that right there on the border. And it's unfortunate that we could stop it tomorrow. Yet we don't have an administration that actually cares about human life. They would rather pander to open border activists. All right. Good stuff. Well, Brandon, we appreciate you coming on the program. Uh, be safe down there in Arizona. Brandon Judd, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Todd.